Tano Sports Central, we go over our next team prediction of this offseason. And this give over the Virginia Cavaliers, a team that was 5-5 five and five overall last season. And uh, this is a Virginia team last year that started out the season 1-4. and four. Uh, They were a pretty terrible team through the first half of the season, and it did not look good for Virginia at first. But this is a team that improved a ton uh, last season. And, of course, having a little bit of inexperience, that was kind of bound to happen for this team to have a slow start. But this team improved a ton, and they've got a lot of momentum going into 2021. So how will this team be in 2021? is what we'll be going for here today. We're going to get started with Virginia's final prediction. We'll be looking at your season trends uh, to get things started here today. Once again, this team was 5-5 five and five overall. 1-4 and four in their first five games, 4-1 and one in the last five. So once again, you can see how this team really turned things around as the season went on. And really, if you look at the stats for this team, you can easily see it there as well. I mean, this was a Virginia team that started out last season and just was probably one of the worst teams in the Power Five, probably. I mean, they were just terrible. Uh, I mean, they were getting blown out by NC State. They had a bad loss to Wake Forest. Uh, they lost by 17 to Wake Forest. Uh, lost to Miami, lost to Clemson as well. So you also had a couple of tough games there. But it was finally until this team beat North Carolina 44-41. Uh, to 41. That's when this team turned things around. And they got some good momentum going. They won four straight. Um, including that North Carolina matchup. They beat Louisville then after that, 31-17, beat Abilene Christian, 55-15, and also beat Boston College, 43-32. They lost to Virginia Tech to finish out the season, 33-15, uh, but still, I mean, for this team to turn things around like they did um, in such a quick time frame, too, it was just insane to watch. I think this Virginia team definitely is showing some big potential going into next season, uh, considering how much they improved over the course of the 2020 season but looking into 2021 now at uh, your roster preview brendan armstrong is coming back he was your quarterback last year uh, and he was a first year quarterback as well uh, for the cavaliers and um of course he's been with virginia since 2018 but last season was his first uh main outing as the starting quarterback for this team which he wasn't terrible uh, he was pretty inaccurate that definitely needs to be improved going to next season but he put up 2100 yards 18 touchdowns uh, 11 picks last season as well. So his touchdown interception ratio definitely needs to be improved as well. But at least um, he's not throwing as many interceptions as it looked like he was going to throw based off of his 2019 stats. Uh, but his completion rate was 58.6%, which is pretty terrible. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, if you look at any quarterback, I mean, a good completion rate is above uh, 62, 63%. And Brennan Armstrong is not quite to that point yet. But I mean, once again, I mean, coming off of a First starting season for him, he's definitely going to improve this offseason. And I think, I mean, he's going to improve a ton from there. And I mean, he's not only a great or a decent passer, but he's also a great rusher. That's the big thing about him is he's a major dual threat quarter, quarterback. I mean, he put up 550 yards of rushing last season and five touchdowns as well. He was a leading um, rusher on this team as well by a significant margin. I mean, of course, you got uh, Wayne Talapapa, who is, uh, sorry for pronouncing that wrong, but he did put up. Uh, just over 400 yards of rushing last season. So Brendan Armstrong uh, was significantly the highest rusher on this team last season. Uh, but you also got Shane Simpson as well. He was your second running back. Uh, he will not be back for next season, but he did put up uh, right around 300 yards of rushing as well. So really looking at this, this offense here, I mean, you got your second running back not coming back. You do have your top one there coming back, uh, which is going to be huge. But in the receiving core, you also return your top two uh, they're with Billy Kemp and Level Davis, um, which is going to be huge going to next season as well. Um, I think this team is looking very good in the skill players positions. I mean, really, once again, I mean, you're losing your second running back and your third wide out going to next season. But otherwise, things look pretty good. I mean, you got your top running back and receiver coming back. You got Brennan Armstrong coming back, which once again, as I said earlier, he definitely is showing a lot of potential for me, at least uh, going into next year. So overall, this team looks pretty good uh, going into next season. You do lose your tight end there, uh, unfortunately, as well. But still, not too concerned about this offense here. As for the defensive side, you do lose two linebackers, one in the secondary as well. Uh, but that's not too concerning. Defensive line uh, is also losing one, so you lose four total on the defensive side of things. So honestly, I mean, offensively, I'm not too concerned about this team. That's going to improve a ton. Defensively, this team does lose a little bit. Um, but I, I'm once again, I mean, four uh, losses on the defensive side isn't too concerning. I mean, that's 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 a pretty average number of losses on a defensive side. But Virginia going to next season, I mean, once again, I think a big influence on how this team is going to be 
is going to be offensively. And if you look at this team and Brendan Armstrong, if Brendan Armstrong plays well, if he improves his accuracy and is able to uh, not throw as many interceptions as well, I could see this team potentially being a 7-9 win team next season, 8-9 uh, to nine even. I think 8-9 to nine is very possible for this team if they play well uh, and Brendan Armstrong improves a ton for this team. But, I mean, for this Virginia team, I do think, I mean, it's going to highly depend on the quarterback situation, but, I mean, don't forget about the defense again. Uh, but I do think Virginia going to next season has got the talent uh, to definitely be a 7-9 win team. It's just a matter of whether or not they can win their games. But, yeah, chances of improvement, I'd say are pretty good for this team. I like Virginia quite a bit, uh, or a decent amount going to next season, potential ACC door course. Poten I mean, there's a chance. I think this team uh, could definitely hang around with a few of the big teams on their schedule. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not they can upset them. But looking at your schedule now, you got William and Mary to start off your season there. Uh, then you got Illinois. So you got uh, the line eye there on the 11th. That should be a pretty easy matchup. I don't think Illinois is going to be a very good team at all next season. North Carolina, that's going to be a tough one to start off your conference schedule. You got them on the road. Uh, then you got Wake Forest at home. You got Miami on the road then on the 30th. That is going to be a tough one. Miami and North Carolina both are going to be outstanding teams next season. And you got to play both of them on the road. This is a tough schedule, though, for Virginia. And that's what also concerns me about this team is you've got, I mean, you're having to play three very tough teams. You got Notre Dame as well down the road on November 13th. You don't have to play Clemson, but you got Notre Dame. So uh, that's, that's pretty unfortunate for this team because, I mean, that's going to be a very tough matchup there. Uh, at least you do have Notre Dame at home, but still it's not going to be an easy game. Uh, you do play Louisville on the road, Duke at home, Georgia Tech at home. You also got a matchup against BYU on the road. Don't forget about that one. That could be a tricky one. Then you got Pittsburgh on the road and then Virginia Tech to finish out the season. So once again, pretty tough schedule next year. I mean, this team does not get much of a break. Um, I mean, your non-conference matchups are pretty tough, except for that William & Mary uh, game there. But Illinois is also going to be a pretty easy team. But I mean, still looking down the road, you got BYU and Notre Dame. So it's going to be pretty tough for this team. But looking at September here, William Mary, easy win. Illinois is going to be a close win. I think that that should be an easy win. Bank is going to end up being a closer win. Uh, who knows? Illinois could be a sneaky team in that matchup. But I'm still going to give the win to Virginia. You're going to lose against North Carolina. That's going to be a tough one. I mean, Sam Howell, that team is going to be potentially top uh, seven top 10 for a good chunk of next season. Same thing for Miami. Miami is not a team to sleep on going into next season. Uh, the ACC is going to be pretty, uh, pretty talented next season. You got three really good teams there with Clemson, North Carolina, and Miami. Uh, you'll be Wake Forest at home. It's going to be a closer one, but then Miami, of course, on the 30th. Uh, I'm going to say it's a loss as well, uh, but potentially it could be a close one. We'll have to see what happens there, but both games are on the road, so that leads me to doubt uh, Virginia getting the win there. But looking at October there, you got four matchups. Louisville's going to be a close one. That's going to be a loss. I mean, coming off of that Miami game, which could be a tougher one, I'm going to say it's a loss against Louisville. Then you got Duke, Georgia Tech, both easy wins. I mean, not expecting much out of those teams. Then BYU on the road. It's going to be a close one, but I think you get the win. BYU doesn't have Zach Wilson anymore. They won't be as good of a team next season, but I could see it being a close one for sure. So at this point, Going to November, you've at least clinched bull eligibility at 6-3, and three, which is great news. Um, that's definitely always a huge um, accomplishment is getting to a bull game. And really, as long as you can make it to a bull game, that's a good season for any college football team. But looking at November here, that's going to be a tough month. I mean, you do have a bye week in your first week of November, but then you got Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, and Virginia Tech. Uh, all three of those teams are going to be pretty good next season, and I think you end up losing all three of those. Um, Notre Dame is going to be a tough loss. Pittsburgh also a tough one. Virginia Tech is going to be close. Uh, that's always a pretty interesting matchup there between Virginia and Virginia Tech. Uh, I think it's very close, but I think Virginia Tech comes in and gets um, a huge win for them. They're going to need a ton of that situation for Virginia Tech, uh, potentially if they're still fighting to get to a bowl game. I mean, Virginia's already clinched it, so uh, the Hokies are going to need it a lot there. And I think they do get the win, but once again, very close matchup there. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this Virginia team. I've got them at 6-6, six and six, but I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I appreciate you guys all watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. I'll see you guys later.